so good. Yes, it feels good. Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Unforgettable Sailing. Today's episode is a tribute to all sailing couples around the world. We are Georgia and Diego, and this is our home, Unforgettable. For the past five years, we've been sailing the planet. Our challenge now is to continue the adventure as our family grows. Subscribe and join our life at sea. Okay, guys, I'm gonna start it. I'm throwing all out, all cards on the table. Uh, I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be sailing for six years if it wasn't for George. I'm assuming a big risk here. I hope she stays humble after listening to all this. Truth is, when all this idea became, it was just an idea, you know, it was just a dream, it was just a, some, some thing I was talking to a girl that I had just met and I was starting to date. And I came with this idea of sailing around the world or traveling around the world in a sailboat. And since day one, George's importance became very evident. When we did our first trials, the first weekends we went out, the boat was quite a mess, you know. Not even, not one door would open without jamming, and there was no toilet. So after we did a couple of weekends, she looked at me, well, if we want to do this, we need to improve the boat. And because of her and for her, we started to renew in that boat. And that not only made our first little boat, a 32 foot, from 1965 really nice but also was the best uh, school I could have because we had to rip the boat apart and basically rebuild that boat again and in this process I learned so much so since day one she's there she's pushing me for forward to to make things right we have like uh, such a different personalities it's it's kind of surprising that that we are together and truth is I feel like I won the lottery with this woman by my side because I can be more laid back, you know, I can be more relaxed and uh, don't care too much about things. But when you live on the sea, sometimes you need to be more focused, you need to take shit more seriously. And that's what she does. Once the boat was ready and we reached George's standards, the boat became really nice. And you know, we were so proud and so excited. And that's that's just gave us a lot of confidence and motivation you know we, we just like a, well we just transform a, a, a boat that was dying into a really nice sailing machine that can take us anywhere in the planet nobody can stop us now and with this confidence boost we left well we, uh, something was lacking here and that there when that was experience georgia there was she had no experience in sailing boats whatsoever and she was really really afraid and again, I had to I had to adapt to that. We were taking really slow in the beginning, which was good. Not again, not only for her, but for me. I had some experience, but not mu not much. As Georgia was uh, kind of uh, not not feeling so safe and things like that, we had to take very slow. If I had a bunch of friends on, just like probably just full on and then do all the things together, and something would have gone wrong. Uh, you know straight away yeah that, that's a fact you know some some shit would happen and well again little by little we made our way and boost my confidence georgia overcome her fears i won't lie sometimes i could feel that she was holding me back but in the end when i arrived safely to the next port and i knew that she had a big 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 part in that and i still feel like that today and I think that's beautiful. Another reason why I think uh, sailing couples work better, it's because uh, this, this combining personalities, they're gonna set the dynamic on the boat. And if you have the chemistry, if it's a good sailing match, just like uh, cre uh, creates the momentum and keeps you going. I love, I love sailing, I love doing the passages. For me, this is the, the biggest joy in this life. Uh, and Georgia is an enthusiastic traveler. And when we reached Bahia de La Grande, which is the best place in Brazil to cruise, it's a big bay with 300 islands, warm water, it was safe, we had friends. It's like, what else can I ask for? Well, Georgia could ask for a new place to see, a new town, 
and, and something else. So again, if I didn't have Georgia, I probably would be in that place till today with the boat falling apart and <laughs> just sitting there enjoying like a, a bum life. But no, she's just push, push, push. Let's go, let's go. We need to enjoy, we need to take advantage from the weather windows and stuff like that. And after six months, we left that place with a heavy heart, but we did. And then we started to climb the Brazilian coast really fast. And then longer passages at this point, we had more confidence and we're enjoying. We're, we're kind of feeling good about having this possibility of sailing two, three days. And then become clear that this life, it, it was for us. The life on the 32 footer was good. The boat was really simple. We didn't have many systems to worry about. But there was a big toll, you know, in, uh, in comfort. What can I do, you know, had no budget for nothing. This, this didn't stop Georgia looking on boats. She was boat shopping on the internet very frequently. And just like, well, Georgia, you can look as much as you want, but we don't have the money. In the end, she found a really nice deal and she kept in touch for like three, four months with the broker and the price were going down, 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 down. We told this story already. And she found us, our next boat. She found us the, the sweet deal. And you know, that's how committed she was to, to keep living this life. She's very persistent and resilient. So she found this boat, she negotiated all the deal and she made it possible. We moved to a really nice boat, hurricane, blah, blah, blah. You know the story. That's when her persistence and she could see something that I could not. I was limited, my vision was limited, that we had no money and we are stuck with that boat. There was nothing that could happen there that would bring us a new boat. And she found a way to make this boat happen. And that was a big, big step. That was a tipping point of our sailing life. Once we get the second boat, we knew that this was not more a trip. It was not more a one or a sabbatical. No, that was our life. We would give up careers and we would follow this. Sometimes I just want to get things done, get things over with and just like solve the problems. When we got, when we lost our second boat for the hurricane, uh, we had to buy a new one. That was clear for us. Just like we never questioned, just okay, we're buying a new boat. But the thing is there was no many boats available in the Caribbean. We found one boat in Curaçao. I had to work and Georgia flew there. She actually, she saved us from that boat. And after we gave up on that boat, the unforgettable tree showed up, a really nice opportunity arise. We, we, we bought it. So if it was for me, maybe I would have pulled the trigger on that boat. But Georgia was more just like she knew what she wanted. She can be very demanding and her standards are high, I won't lie. And she found our boat, which is nice. So again, if I didn't have Georgia at that point, I probably have bought the wrong boat. At that moment, South Pacific was just like something really distant for us. We were planning spending a couple of years in the Caribbean and maybe go to USA and maybe Europe. When, when we met again, Georgia came to me and told me, wow, I think we need to go to the South Pacific. I said, why is that? Oh, because this is this. And then we started to study the South Pacific and yeah, soon became an obsession for me as well. And I think that's wonderful, you know, I think it was the best uh, sailing decision we, we ever uh, take because this place is amazing and I couldn't imagine ah. our sailing trip without uh, coming to French Polynesia and South Pacific and yeah, it's just, uh, it's really the ultimate cruising ground. It's as pretty as no other place and I feel really blessed to be here. Bottom line guys, I won the lottery when I had this girl jumping on board with me and every day every day I look at her and I feel blessed and I'm grateful to have her company and you know every detail on the boat she she has the ability to to transform the boat into a home and that's priceless actually I feel home always when I'm with her but she has this magic to make this little piece of plastic in a home and again I think I would be tired of sailing years ago if it wasn't for her still to this day she she tells she tells me where she wants to go and uh, makes me happy take her there okay guys here we are quick change of scenery to talk about why you need a partner to sail around the world 
Well, I definitely need my partner Diego. I wouldn't have even left the port if it wasn't without him, because I was really afraid to sail and I didn't know how to sail. Life at sea can be pretty tough. Many times I feel scared, I feel, I feel seasick, and to have someone that you can count on is priceless. When uh, you are afraid, someone to tell you it's everything okay, it's not like you're safe, you just need to like get back to reality and see that uh, you're not in danger. And if you are really in danger, like we are together and we're gonna face it. I've been seasick many times during our passages when we were sailing and I cannot imagine to have to do everything by myself, to go into the cabin, to prepare food, to steer the boat. So Diego is really, really, he really helps me when I'm going through it. He, like he's the one that prepares the food and steers the boat. He basically does everything when I'm feeling bad. But he also don't let me just lay down and feel bad for the whole passage. He's like, you have some hours to rest, to lay down, to get back to your feet. And then you need to be up and you need to help because you cannot be useless on a boat. So I think these are the words that I really need sometimes. But sailing life is not only seasickness and bad weather. It's also many beautiful and happy moments that you just need someone to share it because what's the fun if you don't have the person you love, the people you like to share these beautiful moments. I was thinking like how would it be to arrive from a long passage, for example, the Pacific crossing after 19 days, we arrived in the Marquesas. And it was such a big accomplishment. We were so happy to be there and like if I was by myself, I would arrive there and like, yay, happy, really nice, I arrived, I, I would be stoked, of course. I did it by myself, but so much nicer to have someone like to hug and to scream and to cry and to like share this moment, this unique moment, someone that went through everything with you. And I think like our abilities and personalities and skills can match together and can add to each other. Diego is pretty calm as a captain on the helm when we need to anchor, when we need to to get into a marina or when the weather is not good and I'm not the same. I, st I If I wasn't for him, I would just freak out every time, I think, <laughs> because I'm much more like desperate and I like I want to rush to do the things and he's calm, he concentrates, like I know what I'm doing, so he keeps me calm and he instructs me what to do and I think that's how we work together. There are mo great moments when you're living off grid and traveling the world where you want to like sit on the cockpit of your boat in a calm night, look at the stars and you want to philosophize, you want to talk about, I don't know, the universe, our existence, about things we've been seeing in the places we are and it's just so amazing to have someone, in my case to have Diego, we can spend hours talking about so many things, of discussing about the creation of the universe. And when I mean like a partner to say around the world, it doesn't need to be a romantic partner. It can be a friend, it can be a pet, it can be crew, I don't know, just somewhere to help and to share like everything. Because yeah, life is meant to be shared. So what's the point if it's only you? Yeah, for sure it might be really interesting to have like a solo sailing experience, to spend some time alone. But in general, like in the big, in the bigger picture, I really think it's important to have someone to share what you've learned, what you're experiencing. And I don't know, just to, to tell everything is gonna be okay when you are scared. And it doesn't matter whatever we decide to do or wherever we decide to go, I think we have each other's back and this is, just the most amazing part to have someone to have your back, to believe in your dreams. The most crazy situations when we lost the boat to the hurricane, I was like, okay, I feel like buying another boat. I'm not, I'm not giving up. And I was like, what does he think? Maybe he wants to give up. Maybe like that's it. Uh, he's gonna be really sad and that's enough. And then I, I told him, I don't want to. I don't want to give up. I want to get another boat. And he looked at me and said, "Yes." I had the exactly same feeling, the same thoughts. Like we need to look for another boat. So I think it's really nice that we dream together and uh, we go for it together. For many people, when we say we live together on a boat, we spend lots of time together. Many, many, many days we see each other, 24 hours. 
it's just uh, the first reaction is like oh my god how can you bear each other haven't you thrown her from the boat into the sea like i don't know people just like think oh my god that's too much but i'm really glad and i'm happy we have the chance to spend this time together we can really live and spend quality moments and also yeah some days like when someone is in bad mood that's not a good day because the other person probably is going to be in a bad mood too because you have not much space to run we also try to give each other our space like we do things alone we do things separate so we are not like always always together but we do spend yeah more time than a regular couple that work outside and you know see each other in the morning and in the evenings we respect each other so if one of us needs some moment alone needs some time we just like I don't know, I go to the Baum, he stays on the stern <laughs> or something like that or just go out for a swim, paddle or I don't know, go for a walk, leave the boat for a while. Of course on a crossing you cannot do that, but I think we work as a good team. For sure it's not easy, it's very challenging, but I think we found our way, we learned how to deal with that and how to be together and don't annoy the other one too much really gives me a lot of satisfaction when we arrive to a new place and I see his face happy and smiling and like I made it. It's nice to see on the other people's face the happiness that you're feeling too. Some people really can do everything by themselves and enjoy to be alone but for me I I think I really need my partner to stay around the world and I want my partner Diego to stay around the world. What are you talking about me? Nothing bad, just a few things. Mm. <laughs> I know. Wow, I think I have to wait to see that. Yo know, guys, this video is a tribute, as I said in the beginning, to all sailing couples and sailing partners, friends. Crew members and uh, yeah, everyone that sails with you. Because as we said, life is meant to be shared. So if you can have a partner to sail around, and also if you're a solo sailor and you join your own company, way to go. I couldn't stand myself for 10 days alone. <laughs> I need someone to... Stand you. Yes, exactly. <gasps> well, that's it guys for today. Georgia ah, has the but, hiccups. But, yeah. but before we go, I just want to announce something. Yeah. As I have the hiccups, you can talk about We just launched the pre-sale of our Live Aboard Guide. This is an e-book of over 100 pages with lots of information and tips sharing a bit of our experience during these six years on the ocean initially it's only in portuguese if you are in brazil this is available we have the link in our medias george is gonna put here in the description below as well and on our instagram or just go to www.unforgettablesailing.com and a pop-up will show up uh, we are considering making english drop us a message if you'd like to see this liveaboard guide in English and we will consider it, right? Yeah, it's a compilation of everything we've learned along the six years on the water. It's not only for uh, who is in Brazil actually, but uh, it's only all in Portuguese. So if you're in Portugal or anywhere else, or if you speak Portuguese, it might be really helpful for you. I'm really proud of our work and really happy with it. And in this pre-sale, we have a special price and a special offer. So just run because it's for the first 200. Yeah. Uh, and it's running out. E-copies. E Thank, thanks everybody who bought it. Thanks for our patrons and apoiadores. We love you and see you next week. Oh, I Josh. have hiccups. <laughs> Can you record? Oh. <laughs> Can you do this with hiccups? Not sure. Should I oh, hold my breath? Please don't go. You need to give me like a scare or something. Oh. Okay, guys. Uh, truth is... You can be happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the... I'm not who I say I am. Yes. My name is... Uh, Jürgen. <laughs> Jürgen. <laughs> it's a very peculiar name, I know. That's why I changed for a nicer You're one, like Diego. You're which is just like uh, Latin and much sexier. 
Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you you're a Scandinavian millionaire. No, no, no. Actually, I'm poor as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not your boat, actually. But this is my boat. Yeah. So. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it was you're a very terrible. good surprise. You're terrible. <laughs> it's even worse now. Oh. <laughs> I'm God. <laughs> I'm God! <gasps> yes! All this time and I didn't know. I, I yeah. knew it! Yeah. I knew it! I knew it! 